Hey, this is Coach Holloway. Listen, I want to talk to you about passing on the faith. And I want to use this um, illustration here of this the track, bat track baton as, as an object lesson for passing on the faith. I'm going to come back to this. I've got some other ones here. I'm going to come back to this in just a minute. But in Scripture, we're told to defend the faith. Uh, in Titus chapter 1, uh, we're told to defend the faith that was passed down to us. Right? And then uh, in, in 2 Timothy 2.2 2 and, and Matthew 28, the Great Commission, and uh, Philippians 4, we're told to, to pass on the things that you've heard and seen in me, pass on, pass on to faithful men who are gonna who are gonna teach teach others. And so I don't I don't know if you've ever <clears throat> uh, seen the four by four run uh, in a, at a track meet. Uh, I did that when I was in in high school. And uh, the most critical part uh, is 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 the handoff. The most critical part is is passing. It's the exchange. It's passing the baton from one runner to the to the next. And that's the most uh, that's the point where um, where it can be dropped and uh, and then the ra the race is is over. And so um, when when you when you're running that race and, you, and you're looking back and and your man hits a uh, hits his mark, and then you take off running, and and that at that point you you don't look back, but you listen, right? You're listening for 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 their voice, and and when you hear it, you put your hand back, and uh, you put your hand back so you can receive receive the baton, and and um, and so his job, the guy that's handing off the baton, and this is for us, this is for us who are who are uh, serious about making disciple makers. His job in the in the relay is to is to put the baton in the guy in front in, in his hand. That's our job is to put the baton in the hand of the guy uh, that that's in front of it until he gets a good grip on it, right? And you know that, and then he's ready to take off uh, and run with it. That's the picture of discipleship. Uh, in in the Bible and in the New Testament, so passing on the on the baton, um, you know, why does that guy um, behind, you know, why does he's he's got a call, he's got a signal, he's got an audible signal that he gives, and and he and he he uh, he hollers that out, whatever it is, and that guy in front puts his hand in the back, and the reason for that is because he's got he's got something really important to to hand hand him. Right, he's gonna be hand, and now so in the Christian in the Christian uh, worldview and disciple making, he he's handing off the faith. How important is that? I mean, it's crucial. And so, uh, so you ask the question, you know, what's the worst sound? What's the worst sound that you can hear when you're running that relay? Well, the worst sound you can hear is is the sound of that of the track of the baton hitting the ground right because the you didn't make the handoff something went wrong and you didn't hand off and then and, and disciple making you didn't hand off you didn't hand off the faith um and that is where that is what we're seeing today in our world the faith that was once handed down the gospel that Jesus the gospel that Jesus lived out and then died on the cross for has not been handed off to the next generation and all this woke theology progressive so-called Christianity that we're seeing in the world today is the sound of the church. It's the sound of the older believers not handing off the faith. That handing off the baton in a, in a relay, it takes a split second. But in real life, Handing off the faith, um, it, it takes months and, and, and years 
to hand off um, the, the faith to a younger believer over years, over multiple settings. I've done it at my house. I've done it at my school where I taught and coached. I've done it in, uh, in foreign countries. The kids that were in my, um, on my FCA leadership team, I've taken them to foreign countries and in our, in our neighborhood. So discipleship happens over multiple settings or venues or, but it's really not that hard. I'm the regular run of the mill guy. And I, if I can do it, there's a lot more people that can be doing it. The biggest problem is, is, is not that we don't know how. I, I know pastors who say, I don't know how to disciple somebody. Um, the biggest problem is um, somewhere between we didn't know that we sh we should and we don't we don't really care. <laughs> I mean that, that's a terrible thing to say, but the biggest problem is not that we don't know how, but but that we didn't even know we were supposed to be doing that. I mean, I sat in church for years, decades before I, it dawned on me. I need to be trying to disciple somebody. Now, when I when I gave my life to Christ. Um, I immediately started witnessing to the football team and the wrestling team at the high school I went to. But discipleship never happened to me. I, I thank God for Coach Robert Slobodnik in Richardson, Texas, and Coach Larry Smith in Riverdale, Georgia. Those two guys, those two coaches, God used to help me come to Christ. And I'm, I'm thankful for them. But the biggest problem with the, with the church today is not that we don't know how. It's, it's that we didn't even know we're supposed to be discipling somebody else. We think we're supposed to go and sit and listen to songs and, and sermons and then and and then give some money. And that's the average vision of the, the vision of the average believer is not much more than go to church and sing songs and listen to sermons and be good. C.S. Lewis says we are just too easily satisfied, and, and that's true. We're satisfied with, you know, I, I signed a card and, and I prayed a prayer and I even, I even been baptized and, uh, and I, I'm, we're satisfied. We're easily satisfied. We're entertained on, on Sunday mornings with songs and, and, um, and padded, uh, padded seats and, and light show and staging behind and screens Listen, you might say, well, I'm not, I'm not theologically trained. That's okay. If, you, if you're born again, right? Like Jesus told Nicodemus, if you're born again, that means Acts 1-8 is true in your life. You've got the power of the Holy Spirit in your life. It means that John 14, 26 is true. That the, the Spirit of God is, is inside you. And it also means that John 10, 16 is true. That Jesus is out there ahead of you. And then Matthew 28. Not only is he ahead of you, but he's with you as you go throughout your day. The first century uh, Christians, they weren't trained theologically. And the disciples, they were, they were uneducated. They were just regular run-of-the-mill guys. Didn't figure out who Jesus was till after the resurrection. Acts 4.13 so we make it so complicated. But listen, if you're just walking with Jesus, you read your Bible and you share what you learn, you love your neighbor, you, you love people like Jesus loved people. The discipleship happens in, in the, we, we think discipleship, is, the only time it happens is on Sunday morning during the sermon for one hour. Discipleship is supposed to be happening out there in your neighborhood. Jesus said, Matthew 
28, and go to the world. And then in nine, Matthew 9, 37, pray to the Lord of the harvest to, to send forth laborers. That's us. But as it is, Christians don't know how to read their Bible. They don't know how to teach somebody else how to do that. And it, 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 they do it in other parts of the world where there's persecution and oppression. They know how to read their Bible and they know how to teach somebody else what they've learned. We don't know how to defend the faith. We don't know how to clarify and, and, and share the gospel with people. We don't know how to renew our mind. Our, our Christians are so secular in their, in their, in their thinking. We don't know how to um, renew our mind and overcome temptations. We don't know that there is objective truth in the world. And the funny thing, we believe we're going to heaven and worse than that, we're not really not interested in taking anybody with us. But we believe we're not, not going to hell. Listen, I want to show you this um, track baton illustration here. So you're discipling somebody, and all, all they do is they just watch your life. You take you go to the ball game together. You go you go uh, um, to the grocery store together. You go to the marketplace. You just go together. <clears throat> and while you're going, you teach them how to pray because they've seen you pray. Right? You don't have to teach them some a fancy way of, of praying. They just they learn to pray because they've they've seen you pray. And, the, and so they might, might say, well, I, I don't know how to pray. Well, then you get to say, but that's, that's okay. You don't know how to pray. I'm going to teach you, right? And you're going to teach them because you, because you pray, right? And, and, um, and they might say, well, I don't, I don't, I don't know for, I don't know for sure if I'm, if I'm saved. Well, you can explain salvation to them, clarify and share the gospel and, and assure them these things are written so that you know that you have eternal life. And you can, you can help them come to the realization that they, um, they really can be and are uh, born again. So I don't, I don't know how to clarify and, and share the gospel. Well, you can teach them how to do that. And, and, and while you're doing life together, you teach them how to uh, uh, clarify the gospel. And they might, they might say, well, I don't, I don't know... I don't know how to I don't know how to read my Bible. Well, that's okay. I'm going to teach you how to how to how to read your Bible. We'll walk through the Gospel of John together. I'm going to teach you how how to read the Bible, how to look for um, uh, the, the author's uh, original intent and simple questions like uh, like where are they at to help keep the keep the story in context. Are they by the seashore? Are they at the temple? Just simple questions. They can learn how to how to read the Bible, and and by doing that, you're you're passing on passing on the faith to them. I don't know how to uh, I don't know how to overcome temptation. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna teach you Romans twelve one and two, and First um, uh, Corinthians ten um, uh, verse uh, um, verse uh, uh, five and six, uh, verse four and five where we reject a lie and we're receiving truth and we're going to do the mental work that it takes to, to overcome temptation. And I'm, I'm going to be accountable to you. That's how discipleship, that's how discipleship works, provides a healthy environment for, for somebody to ask questions, to share their, their fear, their, their insecurity. And then, and in so doing you're, they're catching your passion for God and your and your your walk with God, and so they might they might say, "My life is a my life's a wreck. What I've done, God couldn't forgive me." And you get to you get to be the one, just like the woman caught in adultery, and Jesus put his arm around her and and said, "Where are your Where are your accusers?" And you get to you get to be because you're discipling. Somebody, you get to be the one that helps them wrestle with their past, their past sin, and then, lastly, uh, you get to help them understand that there is 
objective truth uh, in, uh, in the Christian worldview and in objective reality. In the world as we experience it, there is objective truth. And all these things and, and more people are struggling with, and you get to hand, them off, hand that off to them, the, the Christian worldview, and, and walk with them as they're learning to, to trust God. So discipleship is, is, I say, it's not that hard. And the truth is, um, it's not. And because of the power of God in you, you're able to do that. You're able to disciple somebody else. Come up underneath them and, and help them and be, uh, be support to them uh, as they're learning to, to walk with the Lord. So I encourage you to step out. Ask God to um, uh, send somebody your way that you can that you can help walk with with the Lord, and that's the way. This is the way I put it. I say, just find somebody, find somebody, pray, of course, and find somebody. It's not that difficult. A little bit of coffee or tea, and and share what you learn um, in your, in your quiet time, walking through the Gospel of John, and you can make disciples with the vision that. You make disciples who are going to make other disciples.